Hi, I'm Mr. E-Tutor, your Mr. E-Tutor here at MrE-Tutor.com and welcome to video module 13-6. In this module, we'll be discussing the ACT essay. Now, just like the other portions of the ACT, I'm going to recommend that you prepare for the ACT essay by starting with preparing for the SAT essay. This is because the general concepts underlying the SAT essay response will still apply here. Basically, you're going to have to try to write a whole bunch of stuff because top scoring ACT essays, just like top scoring SAT essays, tend to be as long as they possibly can. And secondly, you are not going to want to do any sort of preparing or planning or outlining of the essay before you begin writing it uh, for two reasons. You should know that you're going to use a five paragraph essay format. And uh, you should also know that you don't need to come up with examples that are true or factual. All you need to be able to do is make stuff up on the fly. But there are a couple of very important differences between the ACT essay and the SAT essay. First of all, the ACT essay will not be about a sort of pie-in-the-sky philosophical question as the SAT essay question will. The ACT essay will be about some issue of policy relating to high school students or teenagers in general. So it's going to be something like, um, should you have to maintain a certain grade point average before you're allowed to drive? Or uh, should, I don't know, should the military be allowed to recruit on high school campuses? Questions of that nature. So in the ACT essay, you'll be defending a certain point of view about the best course of action to take or the best policy to implement. Unlike on the SAT essay, where you'll be sort of discussing generally how people are or how the universe is or whatever you want to call it. This means that instead of having three examples in your five paragraph format on the ACT, you're going to want to have three reasons why your position is correct. So, for instance, if I were writing an essay defending the point of view that there should not be a minimum grade point requirement for students to be able to drive, uh, my first reason for that position might be that some students will have family obligations that require them to be able to drive and that not letting those students drive would harm the families and, and not only the students. Um, let's see, my second reason could be that some of the most reckless and dangerous students are the ones who get the best grades, so it would only be uh, encouraging more dangerous people to be allowed to drive. And perhaps my third example could be that such a policy would encourage students to cheat on their exams and papers so they would have higher grades and therefore be able to drive. So those would all be three good reasons why it's a bad idea to have a minimum grade point requirement for students to be able to drive. And I could list all of those things, of course, in separate paragraphs and elaborate a little bit on them. I might even quote made up statistics or studies or who knows what. Just like on the SAT essay, the only thing that really matters here is that I pick a definite position on the question and put forth examples and evidence that support my position. There is one other thing, though, that you need to know about the ACT essay. Generally speaking, top scoring ACT essays are more likely to consider opposing points of view than SAT essays. As we discussed in the SAT essay section, if you consider different points of view on the SAT, the grader is very likely to think that you don't actually know what you're trying to say and that you're flip-flopping back and forth and you get a low grade for that. But on the ACT essay, it's normal, in fact I would say probably 95% of the top scoring ACT essays I've ever seen have done this, it's totally normal for a top scoring ACT essay to consider alternate points of view. So on the ACT essay, it is completely appropriate and in fact advisable to briefly consider what an opponent might say to some of your points near the end of the essay in a separate paragraph and then explain again why those points are incorrect. If this turns your five paragraph essay into a six paragraph essay, that's completely fine. And actually, that reminds me of one other thing. The ACT essay assignment is 30 minutes long, unlike the SAT is 25 minutes. So that's great, that's an extra 20% uh, of the time that you have, which again will make it easier to uh, write more, and writing more is the name of the game. And that's basically it for the ACT essay. If you'd like to practice writing ACT essays, head over to www.mysterytutorvault.com and post your practice ACT essay in the forums over there. I'll be happy to take a look at it. Thanks very much for watching, and remember, it's easier than you think.